Hi, my name is Neil Joshin Pulley, and I'm bringing you this uh, presentation on how to use XML in SQL Server 2008. This will go through both um, parsing XML and uh, creating XML output. So this is how the lecture is going to be laid out. First, we'll start it with uh, what is XML. Then it will be followed by a section on why to use XML with C MS SQL or T-SQL. Then I'll go into parsing XML in MS SQL, creating XML output in MS SQL, and creating nested XML tags in MS SQL. This will be both theoretical and practical. So I'll actually walk you through creating it in uh, SQL Server. Okay, so first, what is XML? XML starts stands for extensible markup language it's basically a markup language with tags like html it was designed to carry data not display it so basically it's a way to format data that you're transmitting uh, or passing to a receiver xml tags are not predefined you must define your own tags so that's the difference between xml and html and xml is designed to be self-descriptive uh, this was this uh, definition was taken from w3schools.com uh, basically uh, I'll show you an example of XML uh, right now so uh, this is the format of XML uh, a lot of times you could you could choose the name of your tag so every tag open tag has a closing tag you can have nested tags You can have uh, uh, non nested tags. You can have you have a root tag. Basically, you can define the structure of the message you're passing by just using opening and closing tags. You can nest them as much as you want. Uh, this is basically XML. It's a way to, and each of the tags um, could have uh, elements. So you can say uh, n1's equal to pi, pi, pi. This is basically XML, although this, this part was not that important uh, for our case, the, the examples I'm going to show you. Uh, however, uh, XML is actually a dynamic definition language and remember it's used to pass information. It's it's a basically a way to format data in a descriptive way. So now let's continue with the um, slides. So why use it in SQL? Here are a few reasons why you might want to use um, XML in uh, with the SQL Server. You can have dynamic stored procedure inputs. Since this is a way to define data, you can have one input field, one XML input field in SQL Server for your stored proc, and you could have uh, as much data and as many inputs, whether it's a list form or uh, uh, different uh, tag names. You basically could define what you're passing in to your stored proc ahead of time and parse it in there. So that'll allow one stored proc to be easily used for more than one purpose. You can also use XML to exchange information between uh, front-end and back-end systems. Uh, since XML is less, uh, is more structured and you could just, uh, and it's just the data. So by passing only XML between front-end and back-end systems, you can reduce network traffic and only load the page data that changes rather than the entire page. And for any reason you want. There are many reasons why people use XML and they're all listed on the internet. So if you want, you can just Google it. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to show you an example of parsing XML. I'm assuming you know SQL. We're over here, I'm declaring variables. I'm declaring uh, temporary variables. So, uh, I, I mean I'm declaring variables. Uh, so here is a XML variable. 
here is a tab 1 variable, a tab 2 variable, and a tab 3 variable. Um, as you can see, I set the XML variable to uh, uh, XML input I made. It has a uh, root tag of root. The first tag 1 is anger, tag 2 has uh, the value of rage, and tag 3 has hatred in it. Uh, angry words, right? <laughs> but uh, um, I was reading a book, so I got that out of the book. Uh, it was just about this character I was reading about. Uh, so basically, um, I have these tags, and I want to get these values from these tags using SQL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, parse the SQL using a select statement. So select from my XML variable dot nodes, and I'm going to go up one level to its root node. So I'm going to root, and I'm going to call this root node XML table, and everything else after that will be every sub tag after that will be XML row. So in order to access those uh, these values, I have to go XML table dot XML row dot value, and then I'm going to say what particular row I'm looking at from this. Uh, so tag one is one row, tag two would be another row. Whoops. And tag three would be a uh, third row, uh, s another row. So I'm going to say uh, tag one, the first element, and it's a varchar of uh, 100 as tag one. So it'll be in tag one column, this value. XML table dot XML row dot value of tag two of one, varchar as tag two, and XML table dot XML row dot value of tag three of one, of varchar of 100 as uh, tag three. So let's see that in action. What would actually happen if we ran this? I've already written out the example right here. So I'm going to execute it. And as you can see, it's uh, listed the values of each of these um, rows under the same, uh, under different columns. So in that way, in that manner, I could actually access these values. As you can see, um, if I have a double tag of the same name, it's not going to be accessed. However, if I was to do this, what would happen? It would go to the second element. Um, by manipulating this statement, you can parse XML in different ways. Basically, you could parse any XML statement that is passed in uh, to your SQL Server instance. Next, I'm going to uh, create an XML output using SQL Server. Uh, as you can see, I would just do a normal query but at the end of the query, I would use for XML raw, comma elements, comma root, and the name of the root uh, element uh, or tag I want displayed. So let's uh, look at an sample output of that. I'm going to execute this, and here I have my XML uh, output from that select query I just showed you. As you can see, I defined table as a root element table. Each row is separated by a row tag uh, in my table and uh, uh, each uh, each uh, column from that table is uh, listed with its value within the tag. So I have title, SQL dev, title, details, so so so, details. Uh, let me show you the actual data without using it, without it being as XML. 
So as you can see, this is the this is the normal uh, query of that table, and uh, when I defined it with the element root, it came out like this. So it's basically the table output in XML format. And last but not least, nested XML tags. Um, when nesting XML tags, you could simply use uh, for XML path and the name of the um, nested elements uh, roles you want within uh, that particular uh, element. You could say elements and type, and then on the outside, you would have any non nested elements. Uh, from your table and you would just use the same uh, for XML raw comma elements comma root of the root name um, just like before except uh, with the nested elements you have to use for XML path and elements and type and uh, let me show you an example of that So as you can see here, we have a table for each uh, row, which is my root element. For each uh, row that is returned, I have a nested uh, element, which has which is called data. As we can see here, this is data. Um, Outside of that, we have the job ID, right, uh, which is over here, and that's all in a row. And then we have another row with the nested element data, and it has all the um, data again from that particular element. And then I have the row ID once again. and then I did the same thing here so in this way I could actually uh, get and nest elements for a particular uh, row I could even use uh, for XML output I could even use correlated subqueries in here in this case since I just use a select statement it's referring to the same row that I'm getting the data from but uh, and in this I just and in this way it uh, gives me what I want but uh, you can manipulate this in different ways and uh, have your XML output displayed in basically any way you want you have the freedom Microsoft uh, SQL Server allows for your, uh, something a lot of other database systems don't allow uh, with this XML output being built in uh, so that is basically how you deal with XML outputs, inputs, and uh, manipulating XML in uh, SQL Server 2008. I hope you enjoyed this uh, and learned something from this uh, short lecture. And uh, please feel free to ask any questions.